that too. But apparently when you have like a node that has several children elements, you can, and even though you're not getting back like an array per se with like e, this e.target, apparently you can access these elements like you would in an array with bracket notation. Is there anything wrong with conversely grabbing the input line and declaring there a variable for that? Not, there is not, if anything, I thought it was kind of weird to do it this bracket notation kind of way because it seems yeah. like you're just hard coding it. Um, but he assured me that he does it all the time. If anything, I'm actually probably prefer, you know, would lean more towards doing it this way. Right. Because I just, mm -hmm. I, to me, it's it's less sketchy to select things by like IDs than like the, the order at which they're in something because that can change much more easily than like their ID will. Yeah. So yeah, I, I would personally recommend doing it this way with like querying the form for the specific input value that you're looking for. Uh, but apparently a bracket, the bracket was just how we did it in this example. Um, so then after I've got that value, so what did I just do? So then I've got that value. So this value is gonna be whatever someone types into that form. So like e.target, um, zero dot value is going to be whatever you've typed into there. In this case, it's going to be CDMX. And just because, you know, whatever you type in could apply to like multiple destinations in my case, sure. instead of like looking for just one, I like, I did a filter on my destination dot all array and return the destinations in which the locations, you know, the name of the location equal the search value that was entered in our form. Okay. And then I attached each of those destinations to the DOM. And I clear the DOM. The way that I clear the DOM first is um, this like destinations container is um, just one giant div that sort of houses obviously like all of my destinations. You know, it's like one big div here. And whenever I want to clear it, I just set that equal to like an empty string first. And then I attach all of the destinations that I found through this like filter query. And then I attach each of those to the DOM instead. And at first I thought that this is kind of sketchy to do, but this is what I wound up doing throughout my whole project. And I asked Juan about it and he said that it was a very common thing for people to do as well. Okay. As long as you're not just like leaving it like this, like it's fine to do, to clear your DOM like this, as long as you're like, putting something else back on there. Yeah, I think that's exactly how I wrote my clear function too. I, I think I wrote a separate clear function that I called inside of other things. Mm -hmm. but, but do you all have any, like, did I explain it well? Did, did I make sense? Yeah, do you, do you, can you like, um, so let's, can you copy that, maybe that function and mm -hmm. drop it in the chat? Is this, is this something that you push to your repo? Or yes. Because mm -hmm. um, I'm going to like have some time to maybe look at it a little bit further. Um, yeah, of course. I will post this function like in the chat. We're if so I can ever so find the damn chat. Because I want to I want to try it out. If, it, if, if everyone's OK with like doing like a group project, I want to try this out. And see if I can I mean, yeah, why don't we why don't we all like take like a couple minutes to try to implement what Cameron just showed us to all of our projects? And well, then, like, either that or we could do it one by one and see. Can we try it with Steve's project? I think it might be pretty useful to do it because he already has something kind of similar. Yeah, I mean, I'm like, I'm like I, I think it'd be really easy to see if it'll work. So let's try this. Um, all right, you want to share your screen? Yeah, I'm just getting the. Um, Okay, so then, sure. Okay, so then the first thing that I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to go to my index.html and I'm going to want to create that button. So, Can you zoom in on your text in your code a little bit? Yep. How's that, guys? Can you see okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think um, where would be a good place for that? Let's do in the main, should we do the main div container? Yeah, I would do it on just like your main view. That's where I'll be putting mine. Okay, so then um, let's do. I wouldn't put it in the container. 
I would put it maybe like just above the container because if you want to clear that container, it's going to clear out your search bar and you don't really want that. Okay, so like right I would, I would keep it in the body, but like maybe just like right here. First thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to do um, input type equals text. Um, I D. Um, didn't Cameron make a form, right? I did make a form. Oh. Um, you want to drop, drop that in, in, in the group? Yeah. So you're going to just do a form ID equals search form and then have a closed form as a before and after. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm trying to that form. Wait. Do you a form tag. Like, yeah, right? Uh, do you want to drop that in the group chat? So I can have like a template really quick to look at. Here, uh, it'll, uh, is, it, is it in like form? Yeah, it's in like that. an HTML. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah. And then give it like a unique ID so that you can. I'll need it. I'll need it. Right, yeah. Cameron, when you did this in your uh, review, was it a given that it was going to be a form search and not necessarily like a dynamic search? It was not. Because I did a lot. Because I, I, it was the, was it yesterday that I did my review? Yesterday, yeah, it was yesterday. And it was, you know how yesterday during the lecture, Jen was doing that like kind of dynamic yeah. search. I was like thinking about doing that, but I was like, wait a minute, I don't need to like overcomplicate it for myself right now. But you totally could. Yeah. And that, I, yeah. He, did, he did not specify that you had to do it any kind of way. Okay. Because I did a lot of, I, I tried doing a lot of stuff uh, with the on change event listener. Mm -hmm. So, like, that's my initial approach to it. I but, didn't know that you could even do that until like yesterday. Oh. Like, in, like in the HTML, like every single event listener that I have, I've got like a dot add event listener at the bottom <laughs> of my index page. Right, right. Oh, Which is fine. I mean, it worked out, but maybe this is more straightforward. Okay, so yeah, form. Give your form a unique ID, like I did, like search form or something like that. Inside of the tag. Inside of the the open form tag. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm so bad at writing these without template to look at. Be like ID equal or form space ID equals. Yep. Quotes. Uh, whatever you want. Search form. Okay. Um, and then in the body of your form, right, this is where you're going to have your inputs. Okay, so then we're going to do... Um, yeah, like you were doing before, like input type equals text. Um, um, and give this one an ID, yeah, a unique ID as well. Uh, what do you think we should call it? Like form input or search input. Sounds yeah. great. That'd be a good to remember. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, and then you'll want to do uh, a submit button as well. All right, so it'll be on another line. It'll be a submit is another like input oh, yeah. type. Um, where is it? Uh, you can literally just copy and paste it. line 10 if you want to. Is it, I, was, I was literally trying to find like... A, <laughs> Yeah, just copy paste line 10 and just replace all the strings with submit. It works just fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think all you need is input type equals submit, and then you're good to go. Ah, uh, submit. Mm -hmm. Can we get rid of this? Yeah, you don't need it. It'll it'll say submit for you. Yeah. Um, do I need oh. to show you a placeholder for like search recipes here? I think it's nice, yeah. Um, and I because otherwise, that. otherwise, how the hell is anybody going to know what it's for? You know, right? So we'll do. So um, you do it in. You no, you do it in that in that element. Oh yeah, in that input right. element. Did the first one. Yeah, what, the first one. Yeah, and your oh, first. Yeah. You just do placeholder equals. Mm -hmm. um, we'll do search ingredients or what's. And yeah, so yep. what are you what are you trying to search by? Well, so over here, just to show you a little bit about this, I created um, cards for recipes mm -hmm. um, where your original input title is a title, a link to the Im uh, an image link, and a recipe link to like Chewy or like mm -hmm. um, whatever.com. And then you can enter an ingredients here, space by comma. What it produces is an image, the title, the ingredient list, and then oh, a link cool. to 
the recipe. Mm. And then they also just did a basic random recipe thing where you can oh. search by a random ingredient that's in the array okay. and it'll populate a random recipe that uses that ingredient. Wow, that's cool. Okay, well then I think that the most practical usage for this right now would just be to like search for a specific recipe. Mm -hmm. That's what uh, I was going to say too, because you already yeah. have a random ingredient, so that mm -hmm. way you can pinpoint a recipe that you want. And I think that that's just much more common than like someone being like, oh, I have, I don't know, than looking up ingredients. Right, right. So we'll do a search like for a recipe. recipe. That's, that sounds good. So let's search, see. Yeah, yeah. Search for a recipe. So let's do it by like their name, you know? So let's maybe like save this and then check and see how it looks in the browser. It, are you, yeah, it's being hosted right now. Cool. So then, um, so now that we have it showing in the browser, from based on your instructions, the next step would be to go to the index. Mm -hmm. And we're going to want to create an event listener, right? Correct. For mm -hmm. that. So mm -hmm. my event listeners are here. Um, okay. Form submit. Um, we'll, so we got to create okay. a new so one. So let's, right? let's first, let's find the form and then save it as a variable. So I would do that at the very top of this class, up there with all of your other constants. Uh huh. We'll write, we'll write a new one then, right? Yep. Because um, um, yeah. we need we, a way to access the form itself. Um, we'll call it. Uh, what do you call? What did you call yours? Submit. Search or, form, I think. Search form. Search form. How picky was he about the object-oriented JavaScript stuff versus not the object? All. He didn't really care, or even really ask about it. Um, he most, he cared about you being able to explain like where your code goes and kind of like what you're getting out of it step by step, but like where everything lived and like doing things in like particular right ways was not even a thing. Okay. That's okay. So as long as you have some of it, like, and to I told him that show. When I like started showing my code, I was like, be warned. <laughs> I don't know if it's just the nature of this project or if it's just me, but my shit is kind of everywhere. And he was like, no, that's just, that's like kind of how it is for when you're writing just vanilla JavaScript. Yeah, that's exactly what my JavaScript dev friend said. And that's what Jen said too, exactly. Yeah, I feel like if we, if we go into this project and are like, I understand what this would look like, uh, once I put in all the work to get it done right. and I understand how this is implemented through react um, I think that's what they really want us to get out of it Because right. I don't think anybody does this like I, I don't know who like codes in just vanilla JavaScript You don't it's like yeah. there are like there are frameworks out there well, for I us. Mean, That's the whole reason like if you look back in our curriculum, it's like remember when we started doing um, oh, What was a really good example? Uh, Fuck, what was it? When we did the um the like CLI project? Yeah. No, it was uh oh what was the first called? Ruby project. Yeah, well, I actually have a really funny story about the CLI project. Um God, why can't I think of the name right now? It's driving me crazy. I had to look. So uh, uh, SQL, like we've heard of the SQL, uh, how to learn all that. It's like we don't really Oh, and know. nobody writes pure SQL. Yeah. Right, you know, but we but well, now but now we know like what's happening. I kinda liked like, that though. Yeah. SQL is fun. Um, okay, so we need a kind of search form, and we're setting this equal to document dot get Owen by ID, right? Yep. Yep. Uh, and and because you gave it that unique ID, I use document dot get element by ID constantly. Like yeah, for me, it's very it was, useful. It was very useful, and it's very helpful throughout this project to get to like assign unique IDs to a lot of different stuff. That's the whole beauty of JavaScript. I feel like that, like that exactly right there. <laughs> what do we call it? We call it uh, search, search form. form? Mm -hmm. search form yeah. You can just copy and paste that, right? That or or, or type it out. That, that's fine too. Search form. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. Okay. Then, right? So we've got that. We've got that variable. So now let's add an event listener to it. Uh, okay, so my event listeners are groups right here. So we can start a new one, right? Um, yep. Search form. Is that what you named it? Yeah, I think so. Wait. Um, search, uh, like camel case. Mm -hmm. Search, oh yeah, good thing I checked that because I did it yeah. wrong. Search form. So search, search form dot add listener. 
And I'm bad at writing these guys, so I'm gonna need okay. um, That's fine. Um, so we're gonna be looking for the submit. So there you go. Okay. And, then, and then give it a callback function. Um, what I do here is I, whenever I like get a callback function and I know I don't have it yet, I'm like, okay, what am I doing? And I'm just going to name this function this. Uh, so for, in the, and then I'm going to go back and write it. So for this one, name it, you know, handle form, handle search or something like that. Or don't do, fun just write handle search, like no function or anything oh. like that. Because then we're gonna we're gonna declare it elsewhere. Handle search. Mm -hmm. So then, like, okay, it's, so let's write the handle search function. So I can probably just put it like here. Yep. Now, okay. And then we're gonna do. Do you? Okay. Are you not in a class? Oh, no, this is in the index. It's in the index. My bad. I got some things over. Like I, I moved over my rest, my base URL, and like my gets are my fetches for my recipes. And then yeah. I moved over my recipe card information. I started yesterday, the other day, doing my um, fetch for my ingredients. Mm -hmm. um, but I haven't done any ingredients yet. So that's still things that are in here. No worries. Um, this is where everything's supposed to be anyway. Um, all right, so handle search. So it's going to get, it's automatically going to get this argument of the event itself. So uh -huh. that's why we usually just put like E to, as the variable right there to oh, for event. Denote that as an argument. Yeah. And then. And this is where you were talking about doing the prevent default. Yes. Yeah. Yes, because it's a submit. Yeah, it, the default is for it to send a post request. So you just do prevent default with uh, parentheses behind it right there to call it. Okay. So that stops it from doing that. Right. Okay, so then, let's take a step back for a second. When you first pull your page up and it pulls all these recipes up, mm -hmm. does it pull recipes up or does it just pull up these like forms and kind of pictures? Like, let me see your the browser. Uh. So are, is this like all of the recipes that it pulls up and yeah, right up yeah. right away? Okay. Yeah. What I would do is let's go back to the code to your HTML. Okay. Do you have like one big container in like your index.html in the the index.html page? What are we looking for? The, the HTML page, not oh, the index.js. Sorry. Good. Um, so let's see. Div class container recipe book. So this this class of a container. Hmm. So I'm just I'm sorry. I'm looking for your div that just contains all of the recipes, like all of these pictures that pop it's up. It's line thirty seven. Or 38, sorry. ID, ID is recipe card container. Okay, cool. Yeah. So let's go back to your index.js. You probably already have a, a variable for that, that like recipe container, do you? Uh, recipe card container, uh-huh, card container. Oh yeah, card container, okay. Uh -huh. So let's go back to that uh, that handle search button function that we we're just writing. Right here. Right here, mm -hmm. So right now, first you need to clear the DOM. So the way that I do that is I say like right here, I'd say like card container dot eight dot enter HTML. And then set that equal to just an empty string. Um, or, and you know what, I think that you can even just do card container dot clear, right? Doesn't that work? I don't never tried. I, I think so. Got clear with parentheses and that should clear your div. And then after that, um, let's let's put in a debugger. Above here or under? Um, put it underneath so we can see if it's clearing your DOM first. 
All right, and then go back into there and open up your DevTools and just search for something. Um, clear is not a function. What does it say? Uh, this is uh, type error. Oh, dot clear is, that, is dot clear not working on that? Okay, yes, so let's go ahead and change it back to like what we're doing and do dot inner HTML equals empty string. I thought that that worked though. I'm looking it up and I figured it out. And that's, that's, oh wait, that's like this or is it just? Just strings. No parentheses. Or just uh, apostrophe, no parentheses. There you go. Let's try that. That was the right syntax. I'm not sure why it's not working. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it cleared the DOM, so that's good. That's what we wanted it to do. So in your console, let's see what we're working with right now. Let's look at our function. Uh, basically, all we have right now in our function to work with is E. Uh, it's the event itself. So type E and see what we're working with. So E is our submit event. Uh, type E.target. Uh -huh. So e.target is this form, um, this form that we're, you know, that has our value that we're looking for that we want to search for. Okay. So do you remember how I was saying how to like find that value inside of what you are right now? Right, right, right. Um, so would we do, wait. This is where I was, I was showing that you could do either bracket notation or you can uh, oh yeah, like the target dot, like query selector. Mm -hmm. yeah, the target dot value or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. So that that'd be a new line, right? Like what? Um, no, I mean let's before we get back in there, like let's just kind of do it in the console until we figure out exactly what we're looking for. So this is where this gets really helpful. So you're at e dot target. So you're looking for one node in. So you can maybe do like dot query selector. Because what you're really looking for is that input value, like in the text bar, right? So, well, you have to like pass an argument yeah, for the query selector. But remember that input value when you were writing the HTML, you gave it a unique ID of like submit or like search input yeah. or something like that. Okay. I'm trying to remember. I gave myself confused. Uh, yeah, so pretty much all you have to do is just put some parentheses on there and then put mm -hmm. a hashtag and then type in the ID. Mm -hmm. in, inside of a string, but yes. Yeah, yep. Um, like any ID, like one? No, you remember, so it, when it you were writing there. the form yeah. on your HTML, uh -huh. you remember you gave the form its own unique ID, you called it like search form, but yeah. then you also gave this the, the text input value you see below. Uh, above that, it has oh. an ID of search input. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's what you're looking for in this form. So I can, wait, do I just type in hashtag search input? Mm -hmm. And put it all as a string, but yes. Yeah. Like so? Mm hmm But put it, put, put it, it as a string. Put it. Yep. So like I put, put, com or Oh. Put parentheses around, or not parentheses, put quotes around the, the hashtag search. There you go. Yeah, otherwise it's going to be a variable. Yeah, I didn't. Sorry. Um, cut. I like to put identifier at HTML. Um, I think you have like a little underscore. You oh, have like shit. a little underscore yeah. underneath it for some reason. Okay. okay, so boom. So that's giving you that input node. And for you to, yeah, and for that, you can just tag on a dot value, and that's going to give you whatever has been typed in, like whatever the, the user input is going to be. Like so that? Dot value, uh-huh. Should be barbecue, yeah. Barbecue. So that's what it is. So that's what we're searching for, right? Okay. So now we know that. Um, so like, let's maybe go back to the code and let's save that as a variable. You know, like let search value, let's call it search value or something like that, or like user input, whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. Let's search inputs. Mm -hmm. Equal. And then yeah, we just we just figured out how to find it. Wait, I'm in the wrong. 
fucking area. Hold on. <laughs> I saw these like quotes here. I thought it was in the right spot. Oh yeah. Yeah, we're up here. <laughs> okay. Um, um, what did I fucking call it? Search input. Mm -hmm. Equal e the target, and then. Mm -hmm. I would just copy and paste it because you got it all down here in your console in the browser. Like right here? Mm hmm. Like so? Mm hmm. So that's going to go out, you know, that's going to be barbecue, you know, the string. So now, when you are first rendering all of your thing, all of your recipes to the page, how do you do that? Do you have like an attached to DOM? Uh, function. Let me review really quick and see. It's been a while. Um, add recipe. Add recipes to DOM recipe array. Okay, yeah, that's perfect. You've already got. You've already got it. Yeah. Um, so let's go back to our. You've already got this perfect function for it. So it also. So it depends. For this one, like, do you think that, um, like, if they search for a recipe, it should probably bring back like everything that is fit in the search terms, right? Yeah, like I think it should so. just return one recipe. Right. Um, yeah, um, I, think, I think I'd want it to show, if I had another recipe that required barbecue, okay. I wanted to show. So it. right now, what we should do is let's create an array of recipes that meet this search qualification. Okay. Um, and can you think of how we would start to do that? Um, you want to do um, like let let recipes by ingredient equal empty array, or no, you don't want to do an empty array though. You want to fill that array with your new information, right? Thank you. Okay. Well, I don't. We're not filtering it by ingredient. I think we're we're searching by name, oh, right? Okay. Like recipe of name. What is what does the example show us down here for? Okay. So look, you know that you have to look over all of your recipes, right? So right now, you either you have one of two things that you can do. You can either do a fetch request, which is never fun for me. Nope. But you can also do you all have like a do you have an all array? Like whenever you create a new rest a new recipe, do you have like a recipe dot all that has access to all of your recipes? Because that's where your life is going to get a lot easier. Under your constructor, you do not. Okay. But he can't. Um, he can make one, right? All you have to he, do is just save everything to an array. Yep. So go back. To, yeah. So go to wherever that was in your constructor. Uh huh. Um. Someone remind me exactly of how to do this. I think like out above your constructor. Yeah. Yeah. Under the class above mm -hmm. the constructor, isn't it just like like in here? Recipe all equals empty array or static recipe do, do all equals static, empty array. Static all equals yeah write the word static empty array yep mm -hmm. and then space all equals empty array should he make it more unique than all just in case he accidentally typed the word all somewhere so it doesn't break anything like r all or something like that no, just to be he's, safe he's got the, in order for him to access this he's going to have to type recipe dot all um because it's tied as like a it's like a class method you know, like for Ruby, you know how you have to type, like you have to call it yeah. on the class itself. My concern is just that maybe he was looking, or when he was doing, moving I, over his stuff from uh, index.js over was, to recipe, he might I have was, a recipe dot all. I was spiraling through everything. I don't think. Recipe just press recipe. control F and type mm -hmm. in the word all. Oh, wait, right but look, now. Like, yeah, what is this that you have over here for this recipe array? My create recipe? Create recipes constant here. Am so I like 64, green? you're pushing it. Uh-huh. So yeah, okay. So you're kind of doing it here, but this is just not a good place to do it. I think it's a better place to do it like in the in your class, like we were just doing. And I don't right. think we'll have I don't think it Yeah, let's just finish that. Yeah, you oh, don't I, have an all, so I don't safe. have an all, so we're yeah. Cool. yeah. Okay. So 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 now this is setting up like a, a static like recipe dot all array like whenever you cut you type in your terminal like recipe dot all it'll give you an array of all the recipes that you have created uh, yeah um so in your constructor though 
um, at the like bottom line of your constructor, we've got to make sure that this in particular, uh, each instance is getting pushed into the array. You remember like we were doing with you in Ruby, like way back in the gap? <laughs> way back um, vaguely. So that's like, it's not like a return. So here, he's not gonna return, just say like all dot push this, right? In, in or outside of it, right? Wait a minute, wait a minute. It should be recipe dot all recipe uh, dot, dot all. push, yeah. Mm -hmm. These are all the all. instances right. of the thing. Right, you're yeah. correct. Cap, yeah. Yeah, because okay. gotcha. it's a class. Dot push this. Does one help out with your like coding challenge at all? Like, does he kind of hint things, or is he like silent the whole time? Um, he was helpful. Okay, like, I uh, I was writing like one enumerable, and it what I was getting stuck for a minute because I was like, my logic is all good. Like, why is it not returning anything? And we were we were stuck on it together for a minute. He was like, ah, oh, you don't have a return statement. I'm like, damn it. <laughs> okay, yeah, because I had so I I failed my last review with. Uh, what, what was our last thing? Sinatra? What was her name? I think. Yeah. Uh, the Rails. 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 Oh, she yeah. was mine. Rails. What was her yeah. name? Yeah. So she was just awkwardly silent the entire time and just stared at the camera. Oh so like, I would ask like a, like a little question, like, isn't this like the right syntax? And I missed like a parenthesis I've or something like that. One, I've only had one reviewer that even uses their camera. Yeah. Oh. She, Out of she the four reviews I've had, they have not, they did not not even have their camera. Yeah, she had oh, hers on, but when I asked her like anything, it was like, I missed a, I didn't capitalize something. Like I had like character lowercase instead of capital. And I was like, I feel like this is the right syntax. And she, I was like, is this not it? And she just looks at the camera and, I don't yeah, that's know. How it was with was that. it Jennifer? She, was it Jennifer Pezos? No, it was Charlotte Neff. Okay. I, I had her for my last review too. Forgot. It was uh, kind of similar to that. So yeah. yeah, she was just like a stone wall the entire time. The only time, person like. that I had that with was Madeline Stark. She was the, mo the most difficult reviewer <laughs> I ever had. What? On my Rails review, I had like this one, I think his name was Alex, and he literally asked me one question, and it was, what is Rails? And then he didn't even make me do a live code. We just chatted the whole entire time, and then he asked. And then he told Jen that I killed it. I'm like, I literally probably would have failed if I got anybody. <laughs> <laughs> um... The other thing I would say is, you know, you can use documentation during your, yeah, you know, your assessment. Mm -hmm. So yeah, when he did the, when he was like, all right, do the search thing. Like, you can't use Stack Overflow, but everything else is up for grabs. Like, you can sit there and Google shit as much as you need to. Right. I was more about running out of time because I would really not have to have schedule to review. So, so let's speed up. And look, I mean, we're doing this all right now, so you'll know how to do it when it. Right. I, I'm gonna put myself up. And Okay, so put some parentheses on there and then type in this. Mm -hmm. There you go. So now you're going to have this recipe.all array. That's going to be a collection of all of your recipes. So let's go back to our, uh, the function that we were writing. Here we go. Okay. So now you want to look through this recipe.all array and you want to get back and a new array of recipes where the name of that recipe matches your search input value. Uh, okay, so. so. How would you do that? Like think about taking an array and you're, and you're going through it and you're picking out certain ones that you want and putting it in a new array and returning that. Am I just like gonna be looping through the entire list? And What's that? Am I, am I just, I'm gonna be like looping through the entire array? Mm-hmm. Um, so. Would I be doing? Um, Sounds like filter to me. It does. Um, so yeah, filter is going to be a really helpful method for us to go over an array and then return like, a new array of whatever. Is that what's happening here in this like if example? Uh, move these stupid. I see things. a filter right here. Um. I'm that's probably going to confuse me. Don't match the search query. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, essentially, yes, that's what they're doing. They're using a filter to filter through given the search query. Actually, filter is a, um, filter's a, a variable, I think. A variable that's declared earlier. It is. Yeah. So it's not, that's not oh, even yeah, yeah, it's not even relevant anyways. That's that, a certain example. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, 
But they are. That's a really way, weird way for them to do that. Right. Okay, like, so the example is not going to help. It's going to confuse me more. Um, so, that's what we're gonna... so we're filtering through your recipe.all array. So let's start with that. And is, it, is filter taken in like a this? It's just, it's dot filter. Oh. It's a method, I think. Yeah, it's a method dot filter and it takes in two arguments. Uh, so one is going to be the each at the individual element. So you can say like recipe. And then it's going to take uh, a callback function. Okay. Which... So don't put a comma there. I wouldn't put a comma, but um, just do like an arrow function. Yeah. Um, and then do your curly bracers. Curly bracket. Yeah. And let's hit enter and start on a new line. So the way that this works, that filter works, is whatever code block you put in here, it's going to apply that block of code to each element of your array. And if that block of code evaluates to true, then it saves that element into a new array and then keeps going false. If it's false, it just ditches it. So you're going to get back a new array of each element that evaluated true to whatever code block that you're looking for. And then our, our true code block that we're going to be looking for is equivalent to the search parameter. Correct. So you want yeah. to, you're looking for if that recipe's name is the same as what they typed in for your search input. Um, so is that like, oh man, I'm so bad at this. Is that um, you're going to use the triple equals. So, um, cause mm -hmm. you want to say, or actually let's not do that because we were saying we wanted to apply to like multiple, uh, different, like say if they just put like chicken, you know, they might want to get back like chicken Parmesan and like chicken, chicken whatever. So let's say like recipe dot name. And for like harmful input data protection, just for protecting yourself now, it's a good, I think it would be a good practice. Let's to lowercase it. So we don't have to worry about if they're typing in things in lowercase or uppercase or what have you. So recipe that name. So do, the way you do that is do name dot two lowercase. Are you no no no? You had that right. You had that right. Recipe dot name dot two lowercase. Case and then parentheses. And that'll just put it obviously just put it to lowercase. So we want to see if that includes the search input. So you can just do like a dot includes right here. That makes a lot more sense than setting it to an equal value. To an equal, yeah, because then it's only going to find like if you exactly type in. Line, right? Dot includes and then the, your includes needs an argument. So, and our argument is going to be our search input. And I would also, to lowercase this one, I would probably do it in the variable declaration, though, instead of in right there. Um, yeah, like after dot value for the variable declaration, I would put, you know, to low, dot to lowercase, like on line 99. Oh, yeah. Oh, like here? Mm-hmm. Like that, you mean? Mm-hmm. Okay. And with parentheses behind that one to call it. Right. Well, like for mine, we'll probably want to do an, equ an equals. Because you're looking for a specific, a specific name. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for yours, I would say that that would make more sense. Yeah. So, uh, so we've got the now. This is going to give us back an array. Uh, let's let's set it to let's set it to a um, a variable like uh, at the beginning of like line 100. Say like let let uh, recipes equal. Okay, um, I think we need a return mm -hmm. on 101, you right? Do. You do. On 101, it should return that recipe name. Mm -hmm. So just put return at the beginning of line 101. Okay, great. So this should, in theory, be giving us back an array of all of your recipes 
where their name matches the search input. So then all that we have to do after that is attach them to the DOM. And you already had, go, like scroll up again, you already had this great function that you wrote right here, add recipes to DOM, that takes a recipe array and it adds them to the DOM. So, so, why, so just call, why don't you, all, right now, all you should have to do is call that function on this recipes that you've defined inside of your handle search. So yeah, end of your handle search function, just call that. I got lost. I got, oh, here it is. Okay. Right I got lost for a second. Sorry. Um, you got 102. Yeah. Um, so yeah, at the end of that guy, uh, all we have to do now is attach the new things to the DOM and you made it really easy for yourself by making that function already. And how can I write that again? Um, <clears throat> um, so just call the function, the uh, okay. add recipes to or add cards to DOM or whatever it was. Add recipes to DOM, mm -hmm. and then pass in this recipes variable that we just created. Handle uh, search? Oh, no, no, just recipes. You see, because we already have this variable recipes, okay. that is that represents. Right. Okay. Oh, I, yeah, I forgot, I forgot that we wrote this right here. Mm -hmm. like, oh. Yeah. So this, unless we mess everything up, I think that this should work. Let's find out. Um, Can't read property to lowercase. I write that filter. Um, it's I think lowercase is you don't um, camel case the case in lowercase. Oh, I do think you not? Oh. Word. I can't remember though. I think you do. What does that mean? Well, oh, they okay. they have uppercase right. Like, oh you yeah, you're right. You're right. I was wrong. To. Is, what line was the error on? It says it's undefined. So it doesn't, it's not catching the value correctly. Yeah. So recipe.name is undefined. Yeah. So uh, put a debugger, maybe on line 101, mm -hmm. and then we can see what the value for recipe that we're getting is. Mm -hmm. Well, it has to be before the return. Before, before, before the return. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that not the, the property? What is that property of your recipe? Is it, I just assumed it was dot name. I thought, I thought it was. I think yeah. you'll you'll hit this you'll still hit the same error if you put the debugger there because it's stopping on that lowercase on ninety nine. Oh, so put yeah. it. I would say well, put it. It's stopping at the lowercase on on one hundred one. Uh, I think oh, it's, it's it? showing the error there. Oh, it is. Sorry. I, I so so okay. our debugger okay. should should get us in. It's like right it's like right here. No, put it in the in the filter, like like where you just were. Here? Like just right above the return statement. Uh huh. Yeah. Debugger. Um, okay. And in your console, type a uh, recipe. Uh, it's title. Title. Okay. Okay. So oh. change recipe.name to recipe.title. And get rid of your debugger and let's try and give it a go. Yeah, the debugger is there you go. Uh, yeah. Well, nice. Uh can I hear the lightsaber for coming in here and helping us with this? Yeah, oh, thank no you very well. much. For I want everyone this. to do well. Yeah. And I hope like I know this is a I hope I was helpful. Like do you guys oh, feel like, God, yeah. kinda, like I, I feel, oh, definitely, yeah. Yep. I feel like we should like um I would love to go over and do this again on somebody else's project. Just mm -hmm. to like help reiterate it in. Also, guys, FYI, I'm recording this whole thing. So if you want to like go, go back and look at this, let me know. I can send you a link to yep. the um, video. Um, cool. Does anybody else want to try the same thing or do they feel like they got it and we want to move to something different? I was going to say, are we, do you want to fill out the. Yeah. Um, the, I, the I created concept. a JavaScript. Um, um, well, I just want to make sure, does anybody else? want to pick Cameron's brain for anything because he already did his review. He doesn't need to like work on these concept questions and I'm sure he might want yeah. to go. <laughs> so, um, yeah, do you have any more questions or anything in particular? Um, I, I wanted to add, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah. 
Oh, no, you can go, Irene. <laughs> no, you can go. You talk before me. My bad. Uh, I'm so sorry. Um, so I have a problem with my code. Where, uh, so basically, I have a breeds class and then a dogs class, and breeds belong. Sorry, dogs belong to breeds. 